Welcome my web dev friends. In this video, what you're going to learn how to do is how to start validating forms using the React hook form. Check out this form. It's going to look like this. As you type, if say you enter nothing, you can click register and it's going to have all the error message. It won't let the person continue until everything is solid. And then after it's there, it'll give you all the fields and all the values in one single object, which you just send off to your API. Let's get started. One of the most difficult things, a nightmare that we have to do as devs is validate these forms. Now, when I first started, I used to just, okay, I'm just going to write my own, you know, validation. And it's actually very possible. It's not hard. It's just annoying. It takes time. You check the length of the text field. What about passwords? It's just a lot of hassle to write these validations, but it's so important. But the, with the React hook form, it does all the validation for you. So in this video, what I have here is a React form that I've coded myself. So all the CSS you see here, I've done myself and I'll put this in the repo below. So it's just basically a typical registration form, first name, last name, email, password. Now, typically what we want to do is collect this information and then make sure it's valid. Once it's valid, we want to send it off to post into some API. What we want to look at is this React hook form and it's pretty easy. So the first thing you're going to do is take the NPMI React hook form. Okay, so just install the React hook. So the first thing we're going to do is import the React hook form, the use form. The next thing is we want to actually uh, bring in all the variables from the form. So it's going to be const um, right here. And this is basically straight from the documentation. So we're importing the form and we're getting um, the use form. And then on submit, we're going to console log the data and right here. So we have basically straight from the demo. And then on submit, it's going to, the, all the data that's going to come from the form is going to go right into this data. We'll console log. And this is just a function I wrote that can go into um, I'll hide this for now that it's going to send something to the API. And then before we start adding all the registration of the fields, you want to make sure the form on submit, it runs this function, its own built in function called handle submit. The other thing you got to know before we move on is that it, I believe I haven't tested this on everything, but you have to use an input type submit button. So you can't just use a button or you can't use type button and watch out for iPhone on Safari, this input submit button has some default styles you need to override with WebKit appearance none. How this works is you basically tell, you register each field and you tell it what you want it to require. And then it gives you error message. So I love, let me show you exactly how easy this is. So say the first name, last name, I want to make sure people just don't enter nothing. I want to make sure people don't enter like two characters. They have these, you know, validation rules, required, min length, pattern, which would be a regex pattern, which we'll use for the email and the password. And on your input field, right? I have an input text. This is my F, my first name. I'm going to call it F name. So you're registering an F name. So right after the name of the field, you're going to put all of the validation rules. Required is true. Min length is three. And all I'm taking this from is from right here. These guys. So we did nothing right now but register the fields. Now we're going to say underneath. I'm just going to have a ternary if statement, which basically says errors, if errors dot F name, and the F name is just the name of the field, right? The name, not the name of the, of the input, but the name of the, what we registered it as. And if it's true, just go ahead and put your own, you know, CSS, your own error message. So if I refresh, right, I'm going to hit register. Look at that should be at least three characters. And what's even more amazing about this is as you type, it does it itself. So once the error is there, you type, it still says, and now it goes away, right? These are the fancy things you see in a lot of fancy websites. So now the next step is we just have to continue registering all the other fields. All right. So all I'm doing right here, again, common syntax, register L name. You could call it, you could call it last name. You call it whatever you want, but that's going to be the reference. And I want the same thing. Basically, I just want to make sure that it's someone's entering something. So now errors dot L name, right? This has to match this. And I'm doing the same thing, same error message. If we just hit refresh, it's all in taking it. Now what I want to show you is the email and password. What's cool about this is now what is kind of annoying is I feel like the react hook should probably have some email validation, phone validation. It doesn't have that. But what you can use is a regex pattern. If you search these regex patterns are all over the place. And what I do is I keep them in a library. So if you look here, so we'll register the email now required true. And the pattern is going to be which I'm basically using right here. I'm using their validation rule called pattern. I'm importing this 
all the way from a library. I have it right here in lib directory, lib.js. You can search for all of these that have an email regex, password, and phone. So this is just a regex that validates an email. It's very simple, it's there. I'm exporting it, and then what I'm doing is just importing it right inside of my document, right? So I'm importing email regex validation, password, phone, we're not gonna use in this tutorial, but so let's scroll down and let's go here and let me see if this actually worked. Um, so if we start typing, enter an email address, something's not right. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put the error message. So let's put the error message. The browsers now have default, right? You can see that it's actually working if you enter email, but I'm gonna use, you know, the, the full power of this. Uh, react hook form so errors dot email and if we start hitting enter there we go and look at this as you're typing it'll recognize if you are typing in some gmail boom and then it went away now i should probably read the dot com that's that's we can find the better regex places now for the password now you can you can write any regex pad you can find them there's different patterns that are that'll make people put 12 characters 16 characters a symbol so the one i have already um in this tutorial is one that is at least eight characters at least one letter and one number uh, and one special character i'm just going to register it this into the hook form using my own password regex validation i'm going to put an error message should be eight characters you can use the password type but i'm going to do the text for now so you can see as i'm typing and i click submit look at that everything here tells you it doesn't submit the form until this is all filled out and if you see here as we keep going it won't recognize this now we have eight characters we have one number and now we have a special symbol and now it's gone right so this validates that people are entering a right a lengthy strong password all of this data after it's validated and you click submit everything basically goes into on submit this is the um an object called data that object will have all the fields and all the values and then you can use that and send it to your own function to send it to an api and let's dem demo this right now so omar gmail.com and then say whatever da, da, da. and then what i'm doing here is on submit, I'm just console logging the data and I'll show you what it looks like at the bottom. So if we scroll up, here it is. So this is all the fields. It gives you F name and you can change these names as you want. F name, L name, email, password. Everything's right there. Now, if I had a function called register account, I could just send that here and I could send that data as an object. You just send this off into your API and that's it. It's pretty simple. If you've liked that, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.